How does a show between episode one and two go from animation quality like this to something like this? Recently, tens of thousands of people have been discussing this scene from Uzumaki's second episode, and the discussion is centered around a word that keeps popping up, budget. When it comes to criticizing production quality in anime, budget has become a catch-all term that is constantly used. But in reality, there's tons of production costs and problems that can get in the way of a fully fleshed out product. And definitely budget can be at the forefront of that, but in reality, there's so many moving pieces to creating something like anime. So why did Uzumaki's production quality fall off a cliff between episode one and two? And has it ever happened before? My name is Pei, and today we're talking about when a show goes from remarkable to terrible in a single episode. If you're a fan of horror manga, you probably can't come up with a bigger name in the industry than Junji Ito. His popularity and impact on both manga and internet culture is widespread and significant. Even if you're completely unfamiliar with who I'm talking about, there's a good chance you've read one of his works. His highly polished stories are reminiscent of those terrifying creepypastas that used to be all over the internet. And even as someone who doesn't participate much in horror and hates feeling scared, I'm very familiar with his stories. Today we're going to be talking about not only a highly sought after adaptation of one of his most famous pieces of work, but also another iconic series that had a very similar problem. Because making anime is an overwhelmingly difficult process. It runs on thin margins and passion. And because of that difficulty, very often adaptations come up short. But before we understand those examples, let's first understand what it takes to make anime. So when people use that overgeneralized term budget, what are they referring to? Let's play a guessing game. What percentage of an anime's budget goes to the actual process of animation? Well, in reality, it varies from show to show, but this Crunchyroll article about a study that was released in 2010 gave an exact budget for an individual episode that was 30 minutes long, but the actual cost of animating those frames were 51 to 54%, depending on how you define episode directors. Assuming an average of 5,000 frames per episode, each frame cost about $3. The other 40% comes in places that you might expect and others that you might not. More obvious examples would be sound and production, but there's also things like materials, editing, and printing, or episode direction, script writing, and even licensing the original work. Not only is it expensive to make anime, but there's lots of moving parts. Look at all of these employees that were involved in the making of the multiple seasons and movies of Demon Slayer. There are so many moving pieces and roles involved in the production and release of anime. Like obviously sound includes music, voice actors, and foley work, but what is finishing or photography? While finishing was a little bit more intuitive than I thought, it referred to color and quality control. But photography was interesting. It refers to the people who are doing most of the final compositing, taking all the moving parts and layers and putting them together for the final product. There are lots of moving pieces to creating any show. That in conjunction with the fact that anime is running off of a razor thin profit margin means most animation studios would probably benefit from a larger budget or less restriction. And while budget likely is a consistent pressure for almost any production studio, with both of the shows we're talking about today that had major falloffs in quality, the primary issue was not budget, but a disconnect in the production process. Let's start first with Uzumaki. What happened? Basically, the only information we really have to work off of is a public statement from Jason DeMarco on Blue Sky. He was the primary producer for all four episodes, and while he was not allowed to disclose what happened, conflict led to a breakdown. Uzumaki's production was limited back in 2020 for obvious reasons. This led to a four-year production. But looking at the credits between episode one and two gives us a little bit more information. There was a different director for the episode, and more importantly, there was a completely new animation studio. The name Phoenix Animations Holding pops up constantly. Now, an easy mistake to make would be to shift the blame towards whatever team was responsible for the second episode, but we don't understand the context that led to its entire production. There's a very realistic possibility they were given a half-finished product. The point is not necessarily to shift blame, but somewhere in this production process, there was conflict that led to a breakdown. And I'm sure given the shutdown and delays, that budget played some factor, but I think that the conflict was actually the problem. A second team came in and created a product that did not hold up to the quality that the first team did, 
which is a total shame because the first episode of Uzumaki did a fantastic job adapting an incredibly hard piece of media. The challenge of meeting those expectations can be overbearing, especially adapting a manga like Uzumaki, famous for its distinct style. I mean, even the pacing for the manga was very peculiar because it was all built around this premise of flipping a page to reveal a horrific image, which made this first episode of the adaption being done so well, so impressive. Making anime is really hard, if you've ever worked on a school project in a group, you likely understand how hard collaboration can be. Now imagine hundreds of moving pieces. Pair the difficulty of interpersonal relationships with budgets, time restraints, and expectations, and suddenly you have an overwhelmingly difficult process. Shortcomings, malice, or even honest mistakes can cause any of the cogs in the system to seize, which can lead to a serious cascading effect. To me, part of what makes this collapse in quality in the second episode of Uzumaki so tragic is the fact that the first episode was so well done, succeeding in the face of an overwhelmingly difficult challenge. But Uzumaki isn't the first case of a random and sudden drop off in quality between one episode to another. Take for example a beloved staple of anime that showcased just how powerful the rule of cool can be. A couple months ago, my roommates and I started watching Gurren Lagann. I've never seen it, and many have referenced it as their all-time favorite show. And in the first three episodes, it was abundantly clear why some people loved this show as much as they did. It draws you in with such swagger and charisma. There are ridiculous writing decisions that feel just right, until suddenly they didn't. So let's talk about the curious case of Gurren Lagann's fourth episode. There's very few shows that have captured me so effectively in the first couple episodes as Gurren Lagann. It's beautifully animated, engaging, and overwhelmingly fun. I watched the first three episodes in a row with my roommates before we came back and watched the fourth, and then two minutes in I had to pause and look up what the hell was going on. There was a drastic and severe stylistic change, so it turns out that episode had a guest director. Having episode directors is not uncommon at all in anime or television. However, implementing such extreme changes in character design and style is less common. I hated the episode, and would it have continued at that quality, I would have stopped watching. However, I do believe it's fascinating to look at. For me, Gurren Lagann's success was so contingent on its execution, and that became so abundantly clear when they stripped it away. Writing decisions I wouldn't have questioned now stood out like sore thumbs. Characters I had once found likable and compelling now seemed obtuse and obnoxious. Part of the reason I find the discussion surrounding budget somewhat annoying is because moderately skilled people in the animation industry with a huge budget would still make a worse product than incredibly skilled industry professionals with extreme limitations. Animation theoretically has no limits, but practically it has many. Animating stories is such an expensive and time-consuming process. It requires so many moving pieces to even exist, let alone be done well. And even if it's given all of the resources it needs to succeed, there can still be issues in execution. Actually, it's almost likely that that's the case. Tons of mistakes are constantly made in anime, and most go unnoticed. But sometimes the drop-off in quality is so bad that it can't help but break immersion. And that's a shame, especially in cases like Uzumaki and Gurren Lagann where the peak quality of what they created was so outstanding. So when it disappeared, even if just briefly, it was so jarring. But anime, just like many other art forms, lives by a very intriguing rule, that limitations can breed creativity. Ah, but that's for next week, isn't it? I am interested in hearing some of your favorite examples of when low budgets or limitations created a better product. Do you have any that come to mind? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.